It's Ryan again. So I know if you're a year two economic student, you're probably very busy with your IAs right now, okay? Um, because they're due in a couple of weeks, and your teachers probably tell you to put in a lot of works to get a good mark. Uh, you need to spend a lot of time looking through different newspapers to find the right article, and then after finding the right article, you need to do a lot of background research to back up what you find in your article. But I know probably right now you're just thinking, uh, you're you're just feeling really really stressed because. Um, Apart from the I, you still have a dozen of tests coming up. Okay, and you really want to finish your I as soon as possible. I know that's how you feel because I've been there before. I used to be an IB student as well. Okay, but I'm here to tell you, your I, you can write a level seven I within two hours if you follow my strategy. Okay, and this will save your time to study for other tests, so you don't need to be stressed out on an I. Honestly, dude, like you should probably know as well. The I B is it's not like. Like not everything in economics is being covered in the IB. Okay, so the IB covers some areas in more depth and some areas in less depth. Okay, so the idea the idea I'm trying to convey is that when you pick your article, you 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 should try to pick an article that the IB have explored very deeply that relates a topic that relates to a, a topic that was taught in the IB. Why in the reinvented wheels? If you can find a topic that was taught very thoroughly in the IB, then you can just apply your knowledge. Okay, so today the theme is microeconomics. Okay, so what is the best topic in my opinion for microeconomics? I believe it is market failure. Okay, market failure is described very, very clearly in the IB curriculum. Okay, and it's very easy to apply to real life situation. So the topic I would recommend all of you is cigarette and direct tax. Okay, so the article I recommend you to choose, just go on Google, just go on Google and search on the search bar. Um, cigarette and direct tax. I'm sure you can find an up-to-date article. Okay, so just go on Google now and look for that. Cigarette tax, as I said, is such a great topic. Why? Because it, it actually crosses across several uh, parts of the curriculum where you can go deeply. So the first is market failure, obviously. Cigarette is a demerit good. Secondly, you can cover tax, the, 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 unit, the chapter on, uh, on government intervention. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, go through a brief outline of what you should write in your essay. Okay, so this is just a sample. You can, this is just sample outline. Obviously, don't copy it entirely. Okay, but yeah, I think it's a very, very good reference point. Okay, so for paragraph one, I would recommend you definitely. Okay, so state that cigarette is a cigarette. Okay, is a demerit good. Okay, start off by saying that. Okay, so and then define demerit good. Go off by defining demerit. So what is a demerit good? Demerit good is any goods with negative externalities of consumption. Okay? So just define that. Okay? And say that um, the market for cigarette. Okay? Is an example of market failure. And obviously, you should you should draw a diagram. What diagram should you draw? Okay, let me show you. So it's a it's a negative externality of consumption, obviously. Okay, so so the diagram you should be aiming for is this. Okay, so quantity here, price here. Okay, so there's the MS MSB. Let's draw the MSB and the MPB first. Okay, so this is social optimal. Social optimal occurs when marginal social benefit equals to marginal social cost. Okay, right here. Okay, so since there's negative externalities of consumption, so where should the marginal private benefit cost go? Is the private benefit greater or is the social benefit greater? Okay, so obviously the private benefit is greater because there's a harm to society. Okay, so the marginal private benefit is greater than the marginal social benefit. The difference between the marginal social benefit and the marginal private benefit is the negative externality that occurs, right? Okay, so the, the point here, when you explain this diagram, the point is that consumers only consider private benefits, okay? Thus, the free market will, will have a, the free market equilibrium will be at P1, Q1, okay? So cigarettes is overconsumed by Q1 minus Q units. Okay, and between Q Q to Q1, MPC, marginal MSC, so MSC is greater than MSB. Okay, so since MP, MSB is, MSC is greater than MSB, 
Okay, and here's the welfare loss, which is labeled here. Okay, so this is a very good introduction for your first uh, for the first paragraph. Okay. Uh, for the next paragraph, what your focus should be on is to explain the effects of the indirect tax. Okay, so what you need to say is that the indirect tax, okay, is going to shift the MPC upwards. Okay, so potentially, potentially, if it shifts the MPC upwards, potentially. It can reduce. It can eliminate the welfare loss. If if you shift it upwards enough, okay, the the M MPB now M meets MPC, okay, at Q, which is social optimal output. So if this happens, then the welfare loss is eliminated. Okay. So what? So what? How does this happen? In what? In what cases would would the welfare loss be completely eliminated? It's very simple. It will be eliminated if the difference between the MPC plus tax, which is the tax. Okay, the tax, if the tax is equal to the negative externality uh, for, of, of consumption, then it will be completely eliminated. So you should, you should state this clearly in, in your essay. Okay, and what else should you look at? Okay, so first, so you should look at the effects of the indirect tax. Okay, so first of all, the price, okay, the equilibrium delivery price is at P2. Okay, so the first effect is that there will be higher price for the consumer. Okay, for, for producer, producer revenue decrease. Originally, producer revenues P1 times Q1. After the direct tax, equi equilibrium quantity goes to Q, so this is the quantity sold. And the price that producers actually receive goes to P, so it's P times Q. Okay, it went from P1 times Q1 to P times Q, so producer revenue gone down. Okay, and sec moreover, uh, the last thing is government. So the government has revenue. How do you know what is the government revenue? If you've been watching my video, you should know. Okay, so. The distance between MPC and MPC plus tax, 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 tax per unit, right? Tax per unit multiplied by number of units. Okay, so this is uh, total government revenue. Wonderful thing about writing about cigarettes is, is that cigarettes have a very unique nature. That is, the demand for cigarettes is very inelastic. That means the demand is unresponsive to changes in price. And the reason is simple it's because cigarettes are addictive in the short run, at least. Okay, so cigarettes are addictive in the short run. So this has implication on the tax incidence. Okay, so in, in your government intervention chapter, you should have learned about tax incidence. Okay, so um, so PED is relatively low. Uh, PED in this case should be relatively lower than the PES. Okay, if this is the case, you should know from your textbook. Okay, the PED is greater is less than PES. Then the tax incidence on consumer is greater than the tax incidence on producer. Producer. The reason being is because since uh, consumers are unresponsive to changes in price, uh, producers can pass on a relatively large burden of tax on consumers. Okay, because they are just not responsive. Okay, so the tax burden. So you can show it by this diagram. Okay, so actually, tax burden on consumer is is actually the increase in price multiplied by quantity. Okay, so originally price is like P two, now it's going up to P three. Okay, so the increase in price times the quantity, this is tax incident on the consumer. And the rest of the tax revenue of the government is tax burden on producers. So you can see very clearly, tax burden on consumer is greater. Okay, so this is what I recommend you to write for the second paragraph. So for the next paragraph, what I recommend you to do is look at the advantage, look at the disadvantage first. Okay, so what is the disadvantage of using an indirect tax on on cigarettes. Okay, so first of all, it reduces the disposable income of consumer. Okay, because the increase in price is relatively large, as we have established just now. Thus, this would reduce the disposable income of regular smokers, which decreases their living standards. Okay. And secondly, you, you can point out that okay, indirect tax is a type of regressive tax. Why? A lot of students don't necessarily understand why is an indirect tax regressive tax. It's because as and regressive tax means rich people pay a lower proportion of, of income as tax. Okay, so and there are taxes by definition, it's like it's, it's a fixed amount of tax on, on expenditure. Every no matter if you're rich or poor, you still pay two dollars of indirect tax for every package of cigarettes, for example. Okay, so for rich people, two dollars is a small amount. For poor people, two dollars may mean a lot. Okay, so it's it's basically a regressive tax. Richer people pay a lower proportion of income as the as the tax. Okay, because of this, it increases income inequality. And furthermore, most cigarettes, uh, most smokers tend tend to be low to middle income individuals. Okay, which furthers it, uh, further um, 
makes the uh, in problem that increases income inequality more severe. Okay, the next the next point we can say is that the reduction in consumption of cigarettes uh, is actually relatively low due to the low PGD. So, in other words, um, the indirect tax original purpose is to reduce smoking, but that outcome may not be very effectively achieved due to the elast low elasticity of cigarettes. Okay, and this is at least in the short run. Okay, because in the long run, PED tends to be higher because consumers have time to switch their consumption habits. Okay, and lastly, it reduces con producer revenue. So what is the implication? It could face opposition from, from the producers, first of all. And secondly, it could lead to higher unemployment. You can also mention in your essay that um, cigarette um, workers, worker, workers at cigarette companies are likely to be manufacturing workers, okay, who, who have low, low skills. Okay, so basically, it can lead to structural unemployment, okay, because um, they, could not, they may not have skill sets to find other jobs. So in the same paragraph, you, should, you could also mention the advantages. So I believe there are two main ones. Okay, the first advantage is that because, because PED is low, it means the reduction in, in uh, quantity demand is low. Okay, so therefore, um, government revenue tends to be relatively high because, of the re because government revenue is actually uh, tax per unit multiplied by units, right? So if the fall in, fall in quantity, fall in units is low, that means the re government revenue is relatively high. Okay, the high government revenue can be used to fund the government can use the government revenue to fund the production of mere goods. Okay, and the second the second advantage I would say is that in the long run, the reduction of smoking tends to be greater because elasticity increases over the long run as consumers have time to pick their alternatives. Uh, we've covered all the paragraphs, so what is left is a conclusion. So we, you can see in this short in this short period of time, we already covered. Uh, a few main topics uh, in, in the IB syllabus, market failure, elasticities, and even some concepts from mic macroeconomics. So this, I believe, is the best approach to, to tackle your IA. Okay? It shows that you have a lot of economics knowledge that is relevant to the article. Okay? So um, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Okay, so if you want any help, just re register a free trial. Just call our number or send an email. I'll be happy to serve you.